I've taken drugs before, lots of drugs. And while I'm not suggesting that everyone should run out and copy me, you know what, it's not the end of the world. Look, I'm happy to share this with you, the story, not the drugs. Because until more people in public life come clean about their substance use, we're never gonna have a sensible debate, are we? Why do people get so worked up when they find out that someone in the public eye has taken drugs? We say we want politicians to be real people, and the thing is, real people do sometimes dabble. The tabloid press has a field day when someone like David Cameron or Boris Johnson admits to using dope at Eton. It's as if they'd admitted to stealing billions of pounds from the most vulnerable people in society or something. We complain endlessly that all politicians are completely out of touch with real life. When one in three 16 to 59 year olds in the UK have taken drugs, why is the news that Dave had a doob in his dorm greeted with anything other than a shrug? When I was a teenager in Nottingham, it seemed like everyone was on something at the weekend. And of course, I knew people who had problems, myself included. I had mental health issues at the time. And my grandma once had to look after me for a week while I had a serious paranoid episode, triggered by a cocktail of pills, speed and ketamine. At one point, I even thought she was trying to poison me. So no, drugs aren't always fun. But you're not going to communicate that message to young people by pretending that they're all bad all of the time. Because it's not true. And I remember us laughing at the Just Say No campaign as teenagers. If someone offers you drugs, instead of saying something you really don't mean, just say, no. Our fun experiences on drugs just didn't match up with the official line the state tried to push down our teenage throats. We're not talking about some complex issue where there are no right or wrong answers. Ketamine isn't the Middle East, and ecstasy isn't global warming. These substances have a measurable effect on the body, but still the government ignores the science. Drugs advisor Professor David Nutt was sacked in 2009 for daring to point out that ecstasy is no more dangerous than, well, horse riding. Banning drugs doesn't work. Like during prohibition, all criminalization creates is a criminal underclass and violent gang culture. And that won't change as long as it's still criminal to sell substances that millions of people desire. Supply and demand, innit? So why not decriminalize drug use like Portugal did nearly 15 years ago? Rates of use among teenagers has fallen, along with HIV infection rates. In his research for the Cato Institute, Glenn Greenwald says... So what you now have in Portugal is a virtually unanimous consensus that decriminalization has been a success. And who am I to argue? Politicians must be off their heads if they think that bans work, and deep down they know it. A Home Office report published last year concluded that harsh punishments do nothing to discourage drug use. Rather than punishing those of us who have or do take drugs, why not make the whole business clean, safe and accountable? Just a thought. Hundreds of thousands of users use the Impossible to Trace website which sells drugs, forged documents and even hitmen. It's called The Silk Road.